resulting from the nuclear arms race is still very prevalent, though the origins date back to the Cold War. If these weapons were used, a nuclear war would cause international devastation. Luckily, such mutually assured destruction and the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty have prevented one from occurring thus far. But is it enough? Of the eight countries that possess nuclear weapons, India, Pakistan, and Israel have not signed the Non-Proliferation Treaty and thus not given their compliance with the United Nations. We need to examine the roots of the nuclear arms race. After World War II, the United States and the rising Soviet Union agreed that a nuclear war would be devastating. However, neither country wanted to give up their nuclear weapons program. By 1946, the prevention of an arms race had failed. The United States and the USSR competed to prove the more successful of their differences in political and economic ideology. The USSR was formed as a communist society, while the United States remained extremely capitalist and even ordered troops to aid anti-communists. The Soviet Union, fearing inferiority to the United States and disability to retaliate on the same level of destruction in case of an American attack, developed their own nuclear weapons program to compete with the United States, who already had atomic weapons. In 1939, the United States started development of the atomic bomb to prevent a German attack with a similar weapon. The Manhattan Project, directed by Robert Oppenheimer, was proved successful in July 1945 when the United States tested the first atomic bomb. Although Germany had already surrendered, the United States continued the Manhattan Project for defense against Japan. On August 6, 1945, the U.S. used their new weapon on Hiroshima, and three days later, they dropped another bomb on Nagasaki. Observing the severe devastation caused by the weapons, Japan surrendered, and there has been no use of nuclear weapons in the warfare zone. Seeing the United States development and the powerful new weapon used to end World War II, the USSR used espionage and other tactics to obtain the blueprints for the original bomb design used by the U.S. On August 29, 1949, the Soviet Union tested their first atomic bomb, starting the Cold War and ending the United States' power with nuclear weapons. The arms race was the main focus of the Cold War because of the high threat of attack. Both countries developed stockpiles of nuclear weapons to store for defense, and sides took a massive retaliation policy, stating that if either country attacked, the victim would respond with nuclear weapons. While creating these weapons, both the USSR and the U.S. saw the levels of devastation possible, thus neither country attacked an offense because of mutually assured destruction. Despite the consequences, development of such programs continued. In 1952, the United States exploded successfully the first hydrogen bomb. In 1953, the Russians created one as well. The hydrogen bomb created large explosions with a small and light warhead. It was also much more accurate than the bombs previously tested. Later, the B-52 bomber plane was produced by the U.S. It could fly 6,000 miles and deliver a nuclear payload. The United States were able to develop this because of the strong American economy. Russia, however, did not have the economic resources to develop such a weapon and preferred to invest in missiles or self-propelled weapons. In October of 1957, the world was introduced to the fear of missile attack when Sputnik was launched. Sputnik, the first Earth-orbiting satellite, proved the Soviets had the technology to launch missiles as well. 
both sides began to develop intercontinental ballistic missiles. To prevent deployment of missiles, America built the DEW system, or the Distant Early Warning System, around the Arctic. In 1957, the United States created the Atlas missile, which could travel 6,000 miles and land within a mile of its desired target at a speed of 16,000 miles per hour. This missile was considered a very large step towards the arms race, but there was a slight problem. The Atlas missiles took over an hour to prepare, and they could easily be detected because of their size. By the end of the 1950s, the U.S. created the Minuteman missile to solve the problem. This missile stored all of the fuel inside its engine, so it only took 30 seconds to fire. It was also very small and could be stored in underground silos. The United States also found another solution launching the first nuclear submarine, Polaris, which carried 16 nuclear missiles, each with four warheads, which could be targeted at different countries. The tension between the Soviets and the Americans over the race for nuclear weapons eventually led to the most serious confrontation between the two countries in October of 1962. <laughs> Good evening, my fellow citizens. This government, as promised, has maintained the closest surveillance of the Soviet military buildup on the island of Cuba. Within the past week, unmistakable evidence has established the fact that a series of offensive missile sites is now in preparation on that imprisoned island. The purpose of these bases can be none other than to provide a nuclear strike capability against the Western Hemisphere. The United States discovered that Nikita Khrushchev, the head of the Soviet Union, had placed nuclear missiles in communist Cuba, located just 90 miles from Florida. In retaliation, the U.S. sent a naval blockade to stop the Soviet ships. Then, on October 22nd, the U.S. sent an alert of possible attack to DEFCON 3, the Defense Readiness Condition. The scale of DEFCON ranks from 5 to 1, 1 meaning that nuclear war is imminent. Fidel Castro, the Cuban leader, and Khrushchev began to ready the Cuban forces. On October 24th, the Soviet ships reached the enemy lines, but didn't attack. The United States, however, didn't respond because John F. Kennedy knew that if we attacked, the Soviets would respond and war would break out. On October 28th, the Soviets withdrew their forces and the missiles were taken down. This event was called the Cuban Missile Crisis, and it was the last time during the Cold War that anyone risked a nuclear attack. The nuclear arms race to develop these weapons was not only dangerous, but also costly. Two military blocs, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, the United States Capitalist Organization, and the Warsaw Pact Organization, the Soviet Union's communist system, were created to help fund weapon acquirement. Both sides had accumulated a plethora of thermonuclear weapons and systems for deployment. To stop the nonsense, the UN wrote a treaty called the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. On July 1, 1968, the NPT was open for signing. The treaty stated that nuclear weapon-possessing states would not deploy weapons nor aid non-nuclear states in development. Non-nuclear states agreed not to acquire or develop nuclear weapons. The NPT was designed to prevent the spread of nuclear weapons without affecting the capacity for useful nuclear energy. The IAEA, or the International Atomic Energy Association, had a large role in the treaty, ensuring that states were rightly allowed to continue development of nuclear energy on the condition that each state had to meet safeguards to ensure that they were not developing more weapons. By 1970, the five main powers with nuclear weapons had signed the treaty. The United States, USSR, China, France, and Britain. Many other non-possessing countries, including Iran and DPRK, signed the treaty. Later, however, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea withdrew their signatures to develop weapons in violation of the NPT. The UN has since placed sanctions on them. Iran faces a similar threat. Recently, Iran failed to meet safeguard requirements in accordance with Article 3 of the NPT. 
The IAEA, however, could not find any evidence of weapon development. The International Atomic Energy Association now wants access to certain military installations in Iran. The treaty presents the challenge of a delicate balance between denying Iran's rights and limiting their potentially harmful development. However, Iran is not the only problem the NPT faces today. India and Pakistan possess weapons but have not signed the treaty. The conflict of religion devastates Hindu India and Muslim Pakistan. The neighboring countries have both been developing weapons. However, bombing each other would be extremely harmful. A nuclear attack would cause negative effects worldwide, but being neighbors with each other, the effects would surely carry over and devastate themselves. Israel, having refused, refused to sign the treaty, takes a policy of opacity. Whether they possess nuclear weapons has neither been confirmed nor denied. Strangely, the development of nuclear weapons has prevented war from breaking out. The arms race instead has been a conflict over who has more power to destroy the world without actually doing it. However, humanity does have a breaking point, and the amount of weapons of mass destruction we have accumulated today could lead to an extraordinary amount of destruction in the case that an accident does occur. It is our duty and responsibility to understand the effects and the lengths to which we need to go to prevent them.